I'm going to be installing a Monstrum Tactical Free Float on my Free Float Handguard on my DPMS Oracle 308 upper. Um, first thing you'll want to do is to put a little uh, coil or anti season lubricant penetrant for these two set screws to make sure that they come out pretty easy. You might put a drop here too. So we're going to on the flash suppressor. The flash suppressor takes a 19 millimeter. Oh, my 19 millimeter wasn't fat enough so I have to actually use a small crescent wrench but with the penetrant it just comes right off. Next step is removing the hand guard. You should be able to do this while it's in a vise. Give you a little bit more wiggle room. I've already pulled the collar back here so you can see it's not over the lip so I'm able to pop that off and just do a little work it comes right off and with the other sides a similar deal you can pull that back and then get that one off to remove the gas block you need a 560 forts Allen and then with the penetrant, it starts to come off a little easier. There you go. I don't recommend taking the Allen screws completely out so you don't lose them. Just back them out a little bit like that. And then, slight wiggle. And it comes right out. Take that out, put that off to the side over here with the other part, and now it's time for the barrel nut. On my DPMS, the barrel nut actually, to be able to remove it, I bought a special wrench thinking that I needed it. So I bought this special tool or wrench which even says DPMS KAC I got it off of Midway USA and it doesn't fit the nut it's hard to tell from this angle but basically these don't line up and I wasn't if you could see whenever the teeth are lined up on one side they don't line up on the other so didn't feel like waiting as you could tell with the rest of my shop did it the backwoods way and we went with this interestingly enough it worked incredibly well um, I put it right on the teeth I knew I wasn't using this nut again because the new nut comes from Monstrum Tactical and so I just put it on the teeth and it came right off so one thing I wanted to do with mine before I put on the new barrel nut and the new free float hand guard is something that's always bugged me I don't think it affected accuracy much because I was getting one MOA at 100 yards but it's these feed ramps and if you look um, this is the barrel lining up to the threading that goes to the upper if you look right here the barrel is indexed with a key slot here and if you just wiggle the barrel it comes out the thing that's always bugging me is these two feed ramps right here. If you look, these two are the two teeth that the bullet hits when coming out of the feed into the tube. What I'm going to do is simply polish the teeth right on the edges because they're very pointed and it scratches the tip of the bullet. Again, I really haven't had much trouble with Mine from an accuracy standpoint, but for the ultimate accuracy, I'd like to not scratch the face of that bullet. So I'm going to just barely touch these to where they aren't sharp to the touch and it won't scratch the bullet tip. I polish my feeds. I'm going to take the nut that came from Monstrum. I've already applied a little bit of uh, graphite grease just to help with threading. And we're going to just go on like such. 
Vamos a probar uno. This is probably the toughest part of the whole install. As you can see, there's a little spacing. That's because it's grabbing the barrel and starting to tighten against the receiver. I have my torque wrench set on 30 foot-pounds. And I have my barrel nut wrench here. And what we're going to do, per Monstrum's instructions, is we're going to tighten this nut. All right, to 30 pounds. Then we're going to take this out. Just break it, undo it. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the torque wrench set at 30 pounds. I like to try and make sure these teeth are as closely lined up to the plate as possible. We go back again. There's the break. And one more time. Put the breaker bar on it. Just to break it loose, what this is doing is basically setting the nut mechanically. Okay, then we're going to get back with the breaker bar, and this time we're going to go to 30, and then beyond until up no more than 80. We'll try up to 50 or so. See, it broke again. Okay, we're going to take this out. And what we're going to do is work on hole, lining the hole for the gas block. That's the most critical piece. So that's just playing back and forth until we get it lined up. So we'll keep working that torque wrench until the gas tube lines perfectly up one of the holes and then we'll go from there. All right, one thing I like about the Monstrum Tactical is it's an incredibly thin profile. Uh, it makes it light. Another thing that's beautiful about it is you're able to use the existing gas block. I put the existing gas block on and it was not touching but the corners of the Picatinny were just really close and I just didn't want to have any potential chances in the future. I have absolutely no plans on um, going back to a non-free float configuration. So I just want to keep the factory gas block on there and not have to knock the roll pin out and change the gas tube and all that. So I just ground it down. Anyway, and it lines up perfectly now. So uh, earlier, mentioned leaving the allen screws in so you wouldn't lose them now's the time that you want to take them out you had that penetrant in there you want to take these out and put a little thread locker on them and put them back in